Okay. And so you may ask me the question, well, Jones, um, how does one attain this kind of spirituality that is characterized by these things, by these elements that you've talked about? How do I attain the kind of spirituality that is inclusive, the kind of spirituality that is expansive, and the kind of spirituality that is transformative? Well, let me offer you three ways that you can actualize that. All right. Uh, obviously, I am not into method. Methodology doesn't mean very much, but at the very least, I can offer you, I can offer you some ways in which you might be able to actualize that. Uh, the first one is that uh, you have to be open to the possibility of this flourishing spiritual life. Uh, there are many people who think in concrete terms. They're not even open to the idea of spiritual life. Right? They're not open to that at all. But if you're going to access and actualize this flourishing spiritual life, a good place to start would be to be open to that possibility. Of course, you can know of the possibility. You can be open to the possibility. And then, and then that would be a good place to start. Because so often we're so focused on survival. Right, we focus on our body, what what the ego wants, what the ego needs, what we can eat and drink, and and how to make ourselves look pretty, and stuff like that. Right, this is what we do. The preoccupation, for the most part, for for the overwhelming number of people, is with the body. Right, but uh, sometimes life calls us to open up to something more something deeper, something higher, something larger, something that is beyond ourselves. That is the spiritual life, right? You know, because Jesus says, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul, right? Well, when you talk about spirituality, now you're talking about the realm of the soul and the realm of the spirit, right? And that's what this is all about. And so that's point number one. You have to be open to the possibility of that flourishing spiritual life. Are you open to it today? Are you open to that possibility? That's a question you have to answer for yourself. And then the second point, after you've become open to the possibility, is that you have to also be responsive to the call of the deep. Right? As the scripture says, the deep calls to the deep, and only the deep hears it and responds to it. But if you pay close attention and you listen a moment of silence, you would almost hear the deep calling out to the deep, calling out to you. If you listen real closely, you can hear it. Just as the scripture says, you know, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Now, this is Jesus speaking. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Take my yoke upon you, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So in a world of preoccupation and oppression, and people are disturbed about a multiplicity of things, Jesus Christ calls out to you. And he says, come to me, come with your weariness, come with your trouble, come with your burden, come with your issues, come with your problems. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. It doesn't matter what you've done or haven't done. It doesn't matter what's been done to you. Just come, bring all those issues to me, Scripture says, and I will give you rest. It's a pretty good exchange. So... He asking you to bring your, your issues, bring your baggage. What is that baggage? Alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, sex addiction. What is it? Right? Greed. Right? This, this, what, this what people carry around. Shame, guilt, is called conscience. What is it you're carrying today? The, Jesus Christ invites you to bring all of that to him. And in exchange, he will give you peace. He will give you rest. That sounds pretty good to me. That uh, my body can be taken away. 
Uh, my sense of guilt can be taken away. My shame can be taken away. And all I need to do is to respond. And that sounds pretty good. You can bring your shame. You can lay it down at the, you know, you can lay it down before Christ. You can lay it down before God. And he will exchange it and give you his peace and give you his grace. It's pretty good news today. Maybe for so long you have carried this guilt and this shame and this, this issue and baggage around. But it's now time to bring it and lay it down before God. And in exchange, you will get freedom. You will get peace. You will get all of the blessings of God. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. And so we're talking about how to attain this flourishing spiritual life. And we talked about the first point is that you have to be open to the possibility of this flourishing life. It is possible for you to attain the flourishing life. And then the second part is that you have to be responsive to the call, the call from within, right? So spirituality is not something that you have to go to some faraway country to find. Oh, no. It's deep within your own heart. All of us have within us that part of us that is more like God. It is a potential that can become a possibility. It's a potential that can be realized and actualized. Just like any one of us could become anything, we can actualize physically, we can actualize mentally, we can actualize intellectually. But it requires a process of training and developing and practices that we do every day. You know, when I was in elementary school, I never knew that I would grow up to go to college or to get a master's degree or to get a doctorate degree uh, or to uh, be a, a military officer and an advisor at different levels uh, across the various levels of war, either tactical and operational and strategic. I never knew that, right? But as I continue to develop myself and develop my capabilities and with the grace of God, I had opportunities and I got to do these things. Similarly, as you develop yourself, it is a matter really, it's a matter of self-development. Spirituality also is a matter of self-development. You develop yourself and your capabilities and your, your spiritual practices will get you there one step at a time. And with the grace of God, who knows where you will be a year from now, two years from now, or 10 years from now, right? But you can grow. All of us can grow. And so first of all, be open to the possibility of the flourishing spiritual life. Second of all, be responsive to the call to embrace this spiritual life. Christ himself said elsewhere in the book of Revelation when he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. So this is Christ now speaking, obviously speaking to one of the churches. But the idea is the same. You know, Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, ultimate reality, whatever you call him, is as if he's standing at the door of your heart and knocking, and just knocking, and asking you to let him in so that he can, he can be a part of your life. He can be a part of your journey. If you are willing to do that, and if you'll be responsive to that knock and to that invitation, he promises to come in and be a part of your spiritual journey. You don't have to journey alone. None of us can journey alone. Sure, we can journey alone for often has it been that the spiritual life, the spiritual journey is really an isolated aloneness kind of journey. So I get there. But you don't have to journey lonely in a lonely fashion. You can have the greatest companion, God himself, the Holy Spirit himself. Another scripture from James chapter 4 talks about uh, other kind of guidance. It says, submit yourself to God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you, right? 
So basically, this is the practice. You begin to practice drawing near to God in your words and in your thoughts and in your actions, right? You keep your intentions pure, for God is pure. As the scripture says, be holy, for I am holy, right? So how do you draw near to God? Well, you do those things that are more in line with God, and you abstain from those things that are not in line with God. And that's how you draw near to God. So uh, the third point here is that you have to be willing to go on an adventure. You have to be willing to go on an adventure. You see, the quest for spiritual attainment is sort of like the quest uh, or the call to undertake a hero's journey. The spiritual quest also has a departure. It has an initiation and it has a, an arrival. As in the hero's journey, the spiritual quest can be risky, it can be volatile, and it can be uncertain. Yet, it can confer meaning and significant fulfillment on those who are there to go on the adventure. And this journey is simultaneously inward and outward, right? So we see the outward journey in Scripture when God will send certain ones, Abraham, for example, uh, to go to a land that he will show him. So he has to take a physical journey and travel in that way. But the call is also requiring of us to journey inward, make the journey to the heart, make the journey back to the self, to engage in introspection, in self-examination. As Socrates said, that the life that is unexamined is the life that is not worth living. Okay, that's it for now. Please put down your thoughts your opinions and your questions in the comment sections below. Until next time, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell for me. Thank you so much.